Hey, we're here with Jen Madison. What are we going to see today? Today you're going to see a combined strategy where we used Think, Inc., Link, and Tell, Help, Check to have students review previously learned information. So who are we working with today? Today you'll see a group of language arts teachers from grades 3 through 12. All right, thanks. And Tell, Help, Check, neither of which is earth-shattering. Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of Think, Inc., Link, and a thumbs up if you've heard of Tell, Help, Check. Okay, a few of you have, great. All right, we're going to start with our thinking link, which write, pair, share is a similar concept. Or think, write, pair, share, okay? Um, it's just a name that helps me as a teacher recall the steps in the strategy so I can replicate it with intention. That's all, that's all we have by thinking link. Think means that I prompt everyone and provide everyone time to think. Ink means that I'm going to direct all of you to write, and I'm going to provide a structure to help you write. And the link is simply that uh, we're providing a structured opportunity to share. So up until this point, we've been doing a lot of partner chatting. And I'm going to show you Tell, Help, Check as a way to structure that sharing opportunity for the link. So for Think Ink Link, what you do your best to describe the teacher strategy called interaction sequence that we talked about last time, and also that APL should be widely familiar with. Okay. So I'm going to ask all of you to describe the strategy called interaction sequence. And you're going to start with the words, interaction sequence is, and I'm going to give you two minutes to write your description. Please take a risk here. So if you're not sure, take a risk about what you think interaction sequence is. Okay, if you're still writing, try to finish your thought. We've done the think, we've done the link. Now we're going to do tell, help, check, which is a very simple review structure that you can use to review any previously learned information. Okay? So you have your partnerships from before. The one of you, the person who started facing the front will be partner A. The person or persons started facing the back will be partner B. When I say go, A's, you're going to have about 30 seconds to share everything that you have and can think of regarding what interaction sequence is. Partner B, you're not talking at this point, you're only listening. Okay? But listen carefully because you're going to have a role next. And when I say go after that, person B will be the help. And I'll explain more about that in a second. So A's, raise your hand. A's, 30 seconds, you're the only one talking. Tell everything you know about interaction sequence. Go. Go ahead. It's okay if you took a rest. It's okay. It's okay. Now you are talking, and this time you are respectfully agreeing or disagreeing, okay? And then please correct, clarify, or add to to the extent you are able, okay? So it might sound like this. Jeff, I think you're right on about this idea and this idea, but I, I would like to also add this, this, and this, and I'm pretty confident about that, okay? So notice that I clarified, corrected, or added. I didn't offer reasons, but I should have done that. And I also gave a confidence level, so I'm really pretty sure about that, or I'm not sure at all. Because remember, I asked you to take a risk and recall whatever you could. Okay, so B's, you're going to respectfully agree or disagree, correct, clarify, add, offer reasons and confidence level. Go. <laughs> I have to say, 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 I have to say,
because of the interaction. And also, I think things probably happen in this bus by order due to our sequence. <laughs> and snap once. Can you hear my voice? Snap twice. Can you hear my voice? Okay. Now all partners are involved in checking. I asked you to take a risk and to write. Okay. Now we need to make sure that we're correcting our written record. Right? I don't want to let misconceptions set. We need to make sure to correct the written record. Okay. So. This is a one description of interaction sequence. It's a way to get all students engaged in a question or a task, and a way for teachers to systematically call on students. Okay? So this is what it looks like. I ask all students the question, sometimes known as beaming the question. I give adequate wait time. Then I put them on the clock. On the clock just means I'm telling you how much time you have to respond. I believe I gave you two minutes. Then students are prompted to share their thoughts with the partner. And during that time, I'm checking student answers, I'm probing, I'm coaching, I can give correct answers if I'd like. And after that discussion time, then I'm going to select students to respond and do it in a very purposeful way. I want to make sure that I get good and right information out in the room right away. So I'm going to call on people that I know have good and right answers. Okay? So that's purposeful selection. And um, I actually did that earlier with Ashley. I heard her say something that I wanted to be sure came out in the room. And that's what I'm going to say, Ashley, that's a right answer. I'm going to call on you. That's a good answer. Okay. Then I want to make sure that all students stay on the hook. So I'm going to do my randoms. Now ideally with randoms, it would truly be random. I'd have my note cards, my sticks, however you call on students randomly. Random number generators. Okay. And I might call in one or two randoms. And the key here is that they've all had a chance at this point to think, possibly to write. They've all had a chance to talk with at least one other person. So if they're not confident about their response, they can share what their partner said. Okay. And people ask me then, well, so what if, you know, Toby says, I don't know. And I say, Toby, what's the best answer you've heard so far? Because I called on people with good and right answers already. What's the best answer you've heard so far? Or I can allow the pass, but you know with the pass, you have to make sure to come back. So then you say, Toby, I'm going to come back to you in about two minutes. I want you to have an answer. Think about what you hear or come up with something different and share the, the best answer you've heard so far. And then we all know we have those kids that will just explode if they don't get to say their idea. <coughs> so usually I ask for a volunteer. Why is this so powerful? Number one, it's a replicable strategy that I can use and repeat with intention whenever I want to get good and right answers in the room and when I want students to have a chance to process information. Okay. Two, it gives me an opportunity to coach and teach reteach when necessary. You know, so if I come over here and Wendy's having a tough time with this, Wendy, maybe, ha I don't, I'm sorry to pick on you. Wendy has a tough time <laughs> often in class discussions. I can say, Wendy, here's one good answer. What's the right answer, Wendy? She's going to repeat it. And I'm sure she has, Wendy, I'm going to call on you. That's the right answer. I'm going to call on you. I want to give her a chance to be successful and have dignity in front of her peers. And I can do that by making sure she has a good and good answer. So lots of benefits of this. Does it take a while? You bet. I'm going to use this when information is so important that we need to review it. I'm going to prompt you to have an unstructured one minute conversation at your table about whether or not you use this and its benefits or disadvantages or challenges. Okay? Whether or not you use this and benefits and disadvantages or challenges, 30, uh, one minute at your tables, go. But if you put them on the clock, they know about what they have in order to develop their response. So a 30 second right looks a whole lot different from a five minute right. Looks a whole lot different from a 20 minute right. 
So on the clock, prompt all, and I'm going to also add that providing a sentence stem can do a whole lot for guiding responses and encouraging academic vocabulary. I'm going to jump back to that. So just jot down sentence stem and then we're going to come back. I gave you interaction sequences, which is a pretty simple one. I'm going to show you some other ways to do that. And this last one was the piece I was missing before when I was in the classroom, was the structured opportunities to share. My kids did a lot of chatting. They did a lot of turn and talk. And honestly, some of them can handle that. Some of my classes at work. But we practiced a lot of conversational register and not a lot of academic register. You know what I mean? <laughs> academic words, sentence structure. So it sounds like, yeah, that's pretty much what I had too. She's like, I'm like. <laughs> we did a lot of that. And, you know, I think I could have done more to structure their academic conversations. And sentence stems, providing structures to share, is one way. And one structure to share is Tom Hope Chat. This is a very quick, fabulously simple review structure. If you do bell ringers or warm ups at the beginning of class, if you want to do a check for understanding within your lesson, Tom Hope Check. Once you've taught it, you can just say, we're going to do a tell-help check, partner A, tell everything you can remember about what we just heard. Partner B, respectfully disagree, agree, add, clarify, correct, give a confidence okay. Again, that looks different for third graders, but they can do it. That looks different for high school kids, and they should do it. They should do that. I'm really sure about this. Here are my reasons why. Okay. Um, then the, the one thing I did for you is take a risk. <coughs> so when you're doing tell, help, check, it's okay to say, this is previously learned information. Take a risk. Try to do your best to recall everything you know about it. And I know that the, the comment that sometimes is, well, are we perpetuating wrong answers? Yes, if we never come back and correct them. Okay? But if we come back here and everybody check with notes, with the teacher, with text. Okay. And if we have all student revise their permanent written record, or have all students practice one more time the correct responses if written record isn't appropriate, now we've caused them to recall the information on their own, which we know is going to encourage those connections in their brains. We've caused them to correct their permanent written record. Okay. Tell, help, check. Have you used it? Will you use it? How do you see it fitting in? We'll take about a minute at your tables. Someone sitting near you. We can chat. <laughs> okay, we're back with Jen. So how'd it go? I think it went pretty well. Uh, the strategies gave teachers a chance to review previously learned information, and it provided the structure that a lot of students, in this case our teachers, um, need to really think through the content that I want them to, re to remember. All right, so... We've got Think, Ink, Link, and Tell, Help, help check. check. All right. Thank you.